Hello everyone, my name is Alan, and I'm going to present my capstone project and give much advanced overview. Uh, my capstone project name was Smaller Models for 3D Semantic Segmentation Using Minkowski Engine and Knowledge Distillation Methods and with the supervision of Eric Arutsunian. Today we are going Uh, today we are going to talk about knowledge distillation, 3D semantic segmentation and give overview, uh, data set and state of the art models, uh, result and details, and uh, future work what could be done. Uh, so what is knowledge distillation? Knowledge distillation is when we have a big model and we want to transfer, transfer its knowledge to much smaller model and distill the knowledge. Uh, this term uh, became popular with 2015 paper by uh, distilling knowledge in neural networks by Geoffrey Hinton. Uh, and the basic idea is presented on the top left uh, when we have teacher model and student model uh, here on the example on the right, you can see uh, one of the simplest methods that there is used. Uh, it is uh, feed forward convolutional networks and uh, besides using a standard loss uh, function uh, on the output of the model, we are also using a loss function between the the larger cumbersome model and smaller model, and we are trying to distill knowledge much fa faster and distill the general not overfit model to much smaller model. Uh, and Hinton suggested also the formula that is used on the left, uh, where you can see the standard softmax. Uh, when t is equal to one, it is standard softmax uh, algorithm, but when uh, but with T, we we are, and T is a temperature parameter, and it it helps the model to uh, much smoother get to the result. Uh, there are a lot of other knowledge distillation methods that got further popularized. Uh, the left one is paying more attention to tension. Uh, so the basic idea here is to use a tension network and transfer its feature map knowledge to uh, standard convolutional networks. And on the right, you can see that uh, uh, the further methods that use not one student model, but Mm, uh, N st uh, student model and with assembly model methods uh, or voting system, uh, they are using this base knowledge of N student models to learn much better student model. Uh, this is also an example of uh, another paper paper where they use multiple teacher uh, models uh, with different approaches. Uh, the left one is the one that was used in Born Again paper. The second one is using also feature map similarities uh, between student and teacher models. Uh, there is augmentation technique uh, generating sub-teacher networks, uh, which is used, uh, so there is a method uh, that uh, learns different uh, teacher methods by learning distribution of parameters, but not the parameters exactly. Uh, so the left, uh, the left bottom one is about that, and so on. Uh, what is 3D semantic segmentation? Uh, in 3D semantic segmentation, we have 3D scene, uh, and we want to do semantic segmentation of each instance there. So this is uh, the example of indoor data set, where we have table uh, chairs, and each chair is colored different because it is different instance of the same class. Uh, 
the 3D data kept uh, the simplest way of 3D data representation is point cloud, which is shown on the left. Uh, it is, uh, so we represent uh, different points uh, which have three dimensional uh, uh, X, Y, Z coordinates. And, and also uh, for colors, uh, also a RGB. So it is basically three di uh, six dimensional uh, representation. The second one is voxel representation, which he, uh, we define. Uh, so we have we, def we have upper and lower bound of 3D space, and we limit it uh, by dividing it uh, different voxels. For example, voxel size five cent centimeters, and we accumulate all points, uh, there are different optimization algorithms that accumulate different points to specific cell on 3D uh, voxels, and we have, uh, at the end, we have three-dimensional metrics, and each point represents uh, if points exist or not and which color it is. Uh, and on the right, there is a mesh representation which is for optimization, and. Uh, we don't actually use it in our in this study, but it is uh, it is much useful when we are dealing with industry, and there are a lot of optimization techniques that are related to mesh representation, and we have to finally achieve to that point. Uh, what is uh, the simplest? Uh, uh, 3D semantic segmentation algorithms uh, are PointNet and PointNet++. Plus plus, uh, the, they are simple convolutional networks on point cloud data set, but uh, there are concepts uh, there, uh, that used, uh, for example, uh, how do you ro uh, understand the rotation of 3D object, and they uh, they suggest this TNet uh, block uh, that is uh, separating another convolutional block, learn their 3D rotation, for example, and then came back with matrix multiplication to understand uh, 3D rotation of object. Uh, and also they use this similar method for 3D uh, uh, points orders, uh, so, so they understand the permutation uh, because when we change the order of 3D points, uh, the 3D data is the same, but data points are different with their order, so we have to understand also the order. The next one is point CNN. Uh, it is using 3D point cloud information and kind of pulling it into much low number of points. Uh, so here you can see that the number of points gets lower and lower. So we are using convolutions to uh, get uh, much details and then using pooling methods to get much low number of points. But these are old methods and they now perform 20, 40% less accuracy than state-of-the-art methods. Uh, this, the left one is the first one that used transformer methods that my colleague called about uh, recently. Uh, uh, so they are using transformer methods on 3D representation, but it is based on the point cloud data. Uh, uh, the, on the left, they are using for multi-head attentions on 3D point clouds and then using classification network and then segmentation, uh, which is based on uh, standard algorithms. Uh, on the right, uh, it is one of the state-of-the-art methods. Uh, actually, there is a slight uh, error here. It is not only use based on point cloud, but it is also po uh, based on voxel representation. Uh, so on the left, they are using sparse convolutional feature network, uh, which is based on Minkowski engine that we we'll, that I will talk about later. Uh, and on the right, they are uh, uh, for from each uh, feature map, they are extracting information. Uh, which is similar to the example that is used in different uh, uh, 
vision transformer methods. Uh, they, so they extract from each feature map uh, different information and by combining them, them uh, they are using transformer to understand more uh, deeper uh, about the data. And on the right too, uh, these are the blocks uh, shown here on red and on, on blue. The next one is uh, Swint 3D. This is the state of the art on uh, validation data set uh, of ScanNet, which we'll like, talk about later. Uh, the basic idea, idea here is use Swin uh, uh, transformer methods that are used in, uh, in standard uh, computer vision tasks, but on 3D data sets. So in standard Swin, transformer methods, they are using uh, transformer blocks uh, by, uh, by dividing the image or the grid into different uh, patches. For example, uh, it could be two by two patches, uh, 16 by 16 patches, and by combining all of them and using a uh, transformer, uh, they are extracting as much information as they could. Here on Swin 3D, they are using the same method but different with different voxel sizes. So on the bottom, uh, it is only, uh, this, is, uh, the, uh, this is the 2D representation, but it is 3D. Uh, on the bottom, it is only two by two, but on the top, it is the whole, uh, the smallest voxel size it could be. And they are using this all, uh, uh, together by combining by combining their whole knowledge, uh, and on the right uh, you can see uh, the two blocks that they are using. The left one is just window one, and the, uh, the right one is sliding window. This is uh, the simple. Uh, this is the uh, core knowledge, uh, core idea behind convolutional networks. They are using sliding window, and in Swin Transformer, they are using the same to uh, have different patches with different slides. Uh, and finally, uh, this is Minkowski engine, and uh, it is based on the paper for the special temporal confnets. Uh, the basic idea of Minkowski engine is that when we use uh, voxel size uh, with low, uh, as low uh, voxel size as we could, the 3D data gets empty. And with 2.5 centimeters, 98% uh, of the data of the 3D space is empty. So uh, we are using ConvNets, uh, when we use ConvNets, standard ConvNets, for example, 3D convolutions, uh, we are not going to uh, further because the whole data is sparse. So with Minkowski engine, they suggested uh, sparse convolution networks where they use uh, uh, not standard kernels. Uh, they are using uh, uh, kernels with a limited number of points on 3D space or not only 3D space, uh, but uh, Behind that idea, they prove that with sparse convolutional networks, they can achieve much higher result with much simpler um, models. And also, uh, their standard data set was four-dimensional data, so it was 3D uh, scans, videos of 3D scans. And uh, they use uh, unit similar uh, uh, network, uh, but with uh, their sp suggested sparse convolutional networks. And here on the left we have point cloud, on the right we have uh, semantic segmented data. Uh, and uh, uh, this paper was designed on top of Minkowski engine. It is called Mix3D and uh, the main idea here is to use different uh, sense and by combining uh, two sense with different rotation we get another data and this is basically our augmentation technique which uh, made it uh, the best on test uh, data set on ScanNet. Uh, the data set that we have used is ScanNet V2 which is 
uh, total 1,514 scans. Uh, it has 20 labels. Uh, there are also a lot of other data sets. For example, NukeSense is uh, leader uh, scan data set. S3 DIC is outside da outside data set, while ScanNet is indoor scans. Uh, what method we have applied? So we took Minkowski engine with mixed 3D architecture and applied uh, different uh, stu uh, teacher, uh, teacher methods. We used uh, end mixed 3D augmentation and standard Minkowski engine. And also we learned two different student uh, models. Uh, the one is uh, two half smaller each kernel size. And the second one is four times smaller when, and at the end we get four and 16 times smaller with parameters model. Uh, and we used units, a similar structure with uh, sparse tensors and applied res 16 unit for T4C that was suggested also by Mix3D. Uh, the first method that we have applied is using Hinton method of 3D semantic segmentation. So we passed the network with student, with student and with teacher, and also applied loss function on the last layer uh, with uh, the suggested T parameter that was uh, temperature and the second method that we used is use decoder loss. So we took the last feature map of student method uh, and used upsampling there and applied loss function between this uh, block and the loss function between and teacher method last layer. Uh, and also we used the same for encoder last layer. And with similar, uh, and the result was, so we used five centimeter voxel size, but on the state of the art, they were using two centimeters, but with low resources, we could use only five centimeter voxel size. Uh, we, uh, and we replicated mixed 3D uh, result and got 69%, and with half model, we got 2.6% lower result, and Another one is almost 8%. Uh, and this is the table that, uh, based on different classes that we uh, achieved accuracy. And also, uh, it is interesting to note that on some classes, our model uh, performed better than the actual state-of-the-art replicated result. Uh, and also here is shown the result of replicated and the result of their paper. Uh, and also the training with uh, encoder and decoder loss functions uh, became much stable because uh, as we understood it correctly, it is because of, uh, uh, convergence is becoming much faster and we are not letting to model, model to jump with uh, gradients and we are restricting it to, to keep on the state as the teacher model was. Uh, for the future work, uh, there are a lot of things to do. So the first one is you apply this same method on different data sets and understand its performance uh, for large scale uh, methods. So we suggest, uh, we showed multi teacher methods and by accumulating, and also there are methods that use different architecture based teachers and, uh, and get on, at the end a smaller network which has knowledge of different architecture networks. Uh, and also additional layer functions because when we use different methods, there could be transformer-based methods, convolution-based methods, or other approaches, and we ca can have different architecture solutions there to, uh, to distill the knowledge much better from teacher networks. And also there are a lot of architectures we 
didn't apply transformer architectures here. Uh, first of all, because they were heavy, and second, uh, Minkowski engine is limited uh, now with its implementation on specific CUDA kernel and uh, specific versions. Uh, so there is a lot of engineering to be done here to uh, to distill to first uh, to on the same system have transformer based method and Minkowski engine based methods and distill much smaller models from there. Thank you. It is for it. <laughs> Questions? Thanks for your interesting talk. So could you give me a little information about the loss function you currently used? Uh, yes, uh, this is uh, standard MSCF yeah, because with app sampling, mm -hmm. we at the end have same uh, shape tensors for teacher and student networks mm -hmm. with app sampling and we are using MSCF yeah laws pairwise. Uh, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Um, are you planning maybe to use uh, something like uh, SS? I am loss function for 3D images. Yes, it could be used, but by our estimations, uh, MSCI was enough, and the papers that use similar approaches use also MSCI, so we didn't go deeper on the, that direction. Okay, thank you. And also, it could be used some alpha parameter. Uh, we, we used it, but on our research, we applied it uh, one, but it could be used alpha parameter between this L1, L2, L3 losses to get at the end a model that is much uh, similar to what we at the end we want. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you say anything about Minkowski uh, engine? Uh, how does it uh, create tensors? A little bit. <laughs> uh, so, it is using uh, not standard kernel functions. So, in standard oh. kernel functions, for example, in 2D, when we apply 3 by 3 kernel functions, it's always we have nine parameters, yes? But on Mi Minkowski engine, it is not always that case. So, uh, for example, uh, there could be kernel which has uh, the right uh, diameter, so three weights there and another three weights. And also, there are studies on standard 2D uh, that use these not standard kernels that are not full shape. And with these kernels, they achieve the same results with much lower weights. Uh, Minkowski engine is the same for n-dimensional convolutions. It is not only 3D, it is n-dimensional. Mm 